Acts 19, 11 through 12. Now, I love this. Now God, okay, I want you to, I want you to, I'm going to read it like this for a reason. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and disease left them and evil spirits went out of them. Wow, that is a lot to cover. A lot of stuff happened there. I want you to notice something very interesting begins to take place in Ephesus. People began to use Paul's handkerchiefs, the Greek word meaning sweat rags, and aprons worn by Paul. Remember, Paul's a tent maker. They're getting Paul's sweaty aprons, sweaty handkerchiefs from him working as a tent maker, and they're bringing those, and the sick are touching the handkerchiefs and being healed and demons are being cast out by these handkerchiefs. This is in your Bible, y'all. Some of you are like, where's this been on Sunday morning? I've never heard this before. Let me make something explicitly clear. It was God doing the healing, not Paul's handkerchief, okay? It was God doing the work. These handkerchiefs were a point of contact. They were a place of faith that people can lean into, but this was God doing the miracle. It was not the handkerchiefs that were doing the miracle. It was not Paul that was doing the miracle. Because I want you to notice in the beginning of Acts 19.11, what does it say? Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So who was the one working the miracles? God by the hands of Paul. So that means when we're laying hands on the sick, it's not our hand that's healing them. It's God working through our bodies, through our hands, through whatever means it is. So we don't want to venerate handkerchiefs. In other words, we don't want to worship handkerchiefs. We don't want to make them idols of worship. We don't want to make aprons idols of worship. Can God heal with handkerchiefs? Of course he can. God can use anything to heal the sick. But we don't want to begin to make a doctrine of handkerchiefs are how you get healed. And if I could only get a handkerchief, I could get healed. No, you need God. That's what you need. The handkerchief is a contact point of faith but at the end of the day, God is the one that does the work. I have seen people that I know personally healed of cancer because of a handkerchief. A friend of mine that was uh, handing out handkerchiefs in one of our church services, I, we had another friend take it and God healed that person of cancer from the handkerchief. It wasn't the handkerchief that healed them, it was God working through it, which God can do. So this is a very perplexing scripture text that a lot of religious people that are very reserved when it comes to the supernatural, they want to kind of explain this away. I don't want to do that. I don't want to explain these things away. I want to give the biblical, uh, the biblical, how do I say this, context, and that is what you have to notice, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So when I'm praying for the sick, here's the practical thing. Thank you, God, that you're working through me. It's not my effort. It's not my anything. It's God's power working through me. We are not the healers. God is the healers, and God works through people. So a lot of people in the U.S., they don't believe this. And in fact, sadly today, rarely people in the U.S., if this happened, they would do things like uh, call Paul a false teacher, call Paul a false prophet. If Paul did this today in the United States, like just right now, 2022, Paul's in the church doing this, and this had never done, been done before. There would be a thousand videos on YouTube titled, Paul, the false apostle who claims his handkerchiefs heal the sick followed by people bashing Paul, saying what he's do is not, doing is not biblical. Paul should be avoid, avoided. Every heresy hunter channel on YouTube would be making videos about Paul saying he's a false prophet. The comment section would be people ranting and raving about how lost Paul is, how Paul is a wolf, how Paul isn't saved, what a joke Paul is. And here's the truth. And here's what we learn from verses like this. This is what we learn from this verse. God can use whatever he wants and God can do whatever he wants. This is the sovereignty of God. That's the point. God does not need permission to move how he wants to move. So if God wants to move with handkerchiefs or blankets or aprons, God can. And even though Paul would have had a thousand videos about how he was false, it wouldn't have mattered. We need to be very careful, friend, not to say something's not from God when we don't know what, if it is or not. After all... Look at the Pharisees. What did they do? They accused Jesus of being of Satan when he casted out demons. Friend, if I had one dollar for every time I got called a false teacher or a false prophet for this one reason that I cast out demons. Friend, this is the, the hour that we live in where if you do what Jesus did, you're labeled false. But if you don't do what Jesus did, you're labeled a real good Christian. 
If you don't pray for the sick, if you don't raise the dead, if you don't cast out demons, if you don't live a supernatural life, if you don't flow in the gifts, oh, you're a good Sunday morning Christian. But the moment you try to cast out devils, come on, chat, let me know some, let me know you're here. The moment you try to heal the sick, now you're considered a false prophet. Now you're of the devil. But Jesus made it clear Satan can't cast out Satan. I have yet to see a demon cast out or Satan heal anybody. And then after the, someone says, oh, pray Satan. Friend, every time a demon's cast out, God gets the glory. Every time somebody's healed, God gets the glory. And so this was God, Acts 19, working unusual miracles through the hands of Paul. Lord, I'm asking you to do that through me. If nobody else wants it, I don't even care. Make more videos about me. Make more videos about me. I want to see unusual miracles just like they saw in the Bible. I'm not interested in being babysat on Sunday morning and never seeing this. I'm willing to be rejected. I'm willing to be persecuted because I want to see God's kingdom establish. There's something powerful that happens when you say, Lord, I'm willing. I'm a vessel for you, and I don't care about the scrutiny. I don't care about those that talk bad about me. Just like sickness is contagious, Jesus is contagious. Jesus should be rubbing off on people. The same way sickness rubs off on people, Jesus should be rubbing off on people. The same way sickness travels from person to person, the good news travels from person to person. We need to spread the gospel. Think about this. God works unusual miracles. Handkerchiefs are healing the sick and demons are being cast out. Now there's an argument in a lot of reformed theology that says, if you look through Acts, the deliverances stopped happening. The miracles stopped happening. Well, we are in Acts 19 and there's still people getting healed and demons are still being cast out through handkerchiefs. Now, let me ask you this question. Okay. I feel inspired to say this. If a handkerchief is casting out a demon. If people are getting delivered through a handkerchief, why are you so scared of doing deliverance? If God can use a handkerchief to drive out a demon, why can't God use you to drive out a demon? And if handkerchiefs are deliverance is happening through handkerchiefs, why would deliverances not happen through believers anymore today? So can God do miracles through handkerchiefs, but not people any longer? Do you see the, the logic is so faulty here? Acts 19. Well, what about the end of Acts? There's no more miracles. Uh, Acts, I believe it's 28, where Paul's on the island of Malta, which is the very end. Paul heals the whole island, and there's a great revival happening. So what are you talking about? Miracles got slower. Are you kidding me? The very end of Acts was a miracle explosion on an island 